um, this is going to be my last video probably for the portrait. And then when I do finish the portrait completely, I'll uh, post a picture of it and put it in the content area of, the, um, of, bla of our Blackboard shell. Um, today, though, I just want to, um, I've spent some time on the portrait. And um, I want to talk a little bit about some of the things that I've encountered. Um, as I've said, I'm not really a uh, watercolorist. I'm more of an oil painter. But I also think that they are, um, in many ways, very similar. Um, so I want to go over just a few things right now um, that we can do. And I'm actually going to stand. Um, I like to be up over the painting as much as possible. Um, I'm just noticing something right here as we're talking. Um, her nostril is probably a little bit narrower right there. Okay. And that's what happens. You know, as you're painting, you're going to be looking at your photo all the time. You know, all of your information is going to come from the photo. If you're ever wondering, what should I do here, there, or wherever, your answer is right here. Okay. And what's going to happen late in the, in the, process is, is you're going to start to notice things that are, um, you know, that are sticking out, that are maybe bothering you a little bit. And you just have to, you have to kind of go at them and try to uh, manipulate the paint or repaint them or do whatever you have to, to try to get that back. I've noticed for me that I am able to kind of dry brush a little bit and come in and manipulate already dried paint to a point, okay? Be very, very delicate with that, okay? So like, for example, right here, um, I noticed that this line right here is a little, uh, needs to move up a bit. So I'm gonna come in with a new color and I'm gonna try to just move that up a bit. And it does. If you're very careful about it, it will let you kind of reconstitute it and then sort of bring it back up um, or put it in, in, in the uh, position that you want it, okay? So right now, I mean, it's, it's not really necessarily that I'm here at the end. It's more just I'm kind of looking around the painting and I'm looking for what I like to call anomalies, things that just don't look quite right. I'm doing a lot of washes too, okay? Like for example, if I wanted this area of her hair a little bit darker, but I didn't want to go repaint everything, what I could actually do is mix up a dark wash, and some of you may have already done this. Okay, so I'm gonna just mix up a dark wash. I'm gonna test it out. You can see I've tested it out, uh, colors, many times. Now, I may bring it up and it may not have an, much of an effect, okay? Looks like I need a little bit of blue in there. All right, so I can come in and I can kinda wash over this without disrupting it too much and kind of push that area of the uh, hair back a bit, okay? Another thing that I, I like to do at this point in the painting is, is I can sort of intensify color, and I've already done this a little bit, but I can mix up, let's say, like an orange, all right? So let me get kind of an orange. I'll add a little bit of red, a little bit of yellow, and it's just like a wash, all right? Kind of like that. Test it out on my paper, and I've got this kind of light wash. You can search around your photograph, and I'll bet you there's some areas where you could just gently wash in a little bit of color, okay? And when you do it, and if you, if you discover that you don't like what you just did, you could uh, take it back out. But what it does is it kind of intensifies the color of that area without really altering too much um, what you're doing. So um, you can kind of like almost on your phone where you saturate a photograph, it's like you're saturating your painting just ever so lightly without really having to kind of re, reinvent the wheel and repaint re, uh, it. There's a lot of push and pull that goes on in this too. Like for example, her temple right here is coming out too far. It's, it's optically, it's coming forward too much spatially. So I can take a color like that and I can kind of put it in there. If I overdo it, which I did, come in, I'm just gonna blot it out a little bit, but I just wanted to push that back just a little bit, okay? Um, edges, edges are important where like, 
hair meets your skin or where, um, you know, uh, where a sharp edge meets a, a soft edge, you want to go and make, make sure that you've got um, kind of a little bit of a blurred introductory line there. You don't want those really sharp, hard edges. They're going to call a lot of attention to themselves. Right here can get quite a bit of darker. So I'm going to use one of these washes. And I've introduced a little bit of black because i got to get pretty dark here. Okay, and I'm just going to come in there like that and deepen and darken that. Okay, just like that. Add a little bit of blue to that. A little bit too warm in that dark area. There we go. Maybe a little bit of that black in there. Now, if you go to reconstitute a color, or if you go to work on a color at this stage of the painting, you are going to find that um, it'll it'll like pull up your paint. So be kind of careful about that, and and realize that you know you might get yourself in a little bit of trouble. Um, Another thing that you can do too is, especially if you've got these areas of light and dark, okay, I can come in and I can put in some darker streaks in here, like so, and kind of work those in. And again, if I overshoot them a little bit, take my little wash and just kind of knock them back. And again, it's going to pull up some of that color, so you've got to be careful that you don't overdo it. And if you have long hair, or even if you have short hair, whatever, whatever kind of hair you have, um, you, can, you can always kind of um, accentuate it and add some color to it. You can add some streaks, more texture, okay? Get a little bit of blue in my mix here, a little bit more yellow, a little bit more yellow. Remember, yellow is a very weak color. Test it out over here. Mm, don't know if I like that. Let's get a little bit of that blue. Just knock that orange out a bit more. Okay, a little bit more orange now. So this happens. It takes you a while to get your color. There we go. Okay, so now I can come in, and I can kind of pick and choose, but I can I can kind of introduce some warmer uh, high and low lights here. Looking at my photo, I can kind of reintroduce this dark right there. Okay, up in here I can bring some of these warms up into the hair there, just to kind of warm it up a little bit, make sure that I'm, um, I'm getting enough going on there. Again, um, there are times where I felt like I had maybe a little bit too hard of an edge, like let's say right here. So I'm going to go in and attempt, and it doesn't give you a lot of a time to do it. I'm going to come in and try to knock that out a little bit. It didn't really let me do it, so I'm going to mix up a little color to kind of patch up what I just did. Okay, and at least I was able to kind of blur that edge. Um, this edge here on her uh, nostril, okay, is one of those edges that I think is just too sharp. So I'm going to take a brush that has a little bit of water on it, not a ton of water, and I'm going to come in here and see if I can't just break this up a little bit. It kind of reconstitutes it, and it just lets me kind of break it up a little bit. Very uh, cool sort of thing that watercolor lets you do. Um, and then, again, almost every time you do that, you've got to do a little repair, too, because I've kind of overshot it. So there, that we got that. Take your finger and just kind of get that little guy off there. Come on. <laughs> Okay. All right. Um, let's see. Up along her eyebrow, just kind of shopping around. What are we at, Allie, time-wise? Nine minutes. Wow. Time flies when you're having fun here. Um, but this eyebrow is a little bit too sharp. Okay? So you're just going to go in there with a little kind of that introductory or that little breakup line that breaks it up. Um, remember, the whites of eyes are not white. Rarely they are they because they're in shadow. Um, in my case, I had to go in a couple times and, um, and darken them. I thought I had it, and it, it needed to get even darker. So we can come in here. We can add a little more texture with this brush. And again, just get some of those little bit more uh, texture in the, in the hair there. 
All right, so I didn't want to go too long here. Um, I will post this once I do finish it. I went with a dark background, okay? I don't know if you guys can see it right there, okay? I went with the dark background. I don't know. I kind of wanted to go with the light background, but I got the black going, and I and I, I couldn't reverse it. So, but you can see there's a little bit of modeling happening here, okay? Um, but I'm looking for those main patterns of light and dark. You notice her nose is real bright. The dark side of her face recedes back. We've got this deep dark area by her hair. Her hair up here is on the dark side now too. It's in shadow. Um, so. We allow for a little bit of, you know, not everything is 100% correct, but if you play with it long enough and you work in layers, you're going to get it to where you're going to get a pretty cool looking portrait. So that's our goal. Um, this is a, just an example, and I'm, I'm sort of fumbling through it uh, in the same way maybe you guys are, and I'm having some fun, um, making some mistakes, but I'm able to dab them off most of the time and just having fun adding detail, fixing things if something doesn't look quite right, but stick with it. Put a decent amount of time in this painting, um, and uh, I don't know, I, I'd do it again. It was fun. So hopefully you enjoyed this and you find this useful. Uh, have a wonderful rest of your day, night, week, and uh, I'll be talking to you guys on uh, Monday. Take care.